I want to give a quick shout out to Gatling Hawk and thanks for giving me the idea to make this episode. So one of the most common questions that I get in regards to communication between blueprints is when do I use casting and when do I use interfaces? So I'll give you the short answer and then I'll give you the long answer. So the short answer is when you know precisely what blueprint you're communicating to. You're communicating from the character to the staff or to the weapon, whatever it is, casting works great. But if you don't know the blueprint, you don't know the actor class that you're communicating to. So for example, this flamethrower is hitting a tree, it's hitting a rock, it's hitting maybe water. When you don't know the class, it's best to use an interface. But let's take this door here. So let's actually build this as a new blueprint that first we'll do casting. We'll take our character. So let's say only our character can walk through this door. So in that case, we could do casting, but let's say other characters can walk through the door. Let's say something random, like a giant boulder can push through the door. So in that situation, we'd want to use an interface, but first let's do it via casting. So we'll create a brand new blueprint class and we'll make it a parent class actor and I'll just call it BP interactive door. So we'll go into that. So to the default scene root, I'm just going to add three static meshes. So from our last episode, we got a left door, we got a right door, and we got our doorway. Right door, and then the last one, static mesh, will make this our doorway, archway. And actually the left door and the right door are part of the archway, so we'll add them there. And we'll assign our static meshes here. Zoom out a little bit, and we'll go over to our door, left door, and then our right door. The other thing I'm going to add is a collision box. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we need a space that's going to indicate that the player is overlapping whatever area we want to open the door from. In the box, that's actually going to be our default scene. So I'm going to make a new route. So if the box is the center, then we can do relative locations for everything. So I already figured this out ahead of time. We got our archway. The box is kind of right in the center there. We got our left door and we got our right door. So the box, I'm going to make this a lot larger. So the box extent, extend it out. Let's do 640, 640, 640. Big box, maybe a little bit shorter. Let's do 480Z. All right, so the idea is anytime the player runs into this box space, the door will open. And to make sure this box detects the player, if you scroll down, just make sure this collision presets here is set to overlap all dynamic. So I'm gonna do this via timeline because what I can do is I can pause the timeline and play it backwards to close the door at any point that the player leaves the box. So let's go over to our event graph. We're gonna add a timeline, add a timeline, and I'm gonna call it open door. Go into that, add a track, float track. I'm gonna call it door open amount because it's just gonna go from zero to one. It's a normalized amount time zero value zero and then over here we're gonna add a key I'm gonna make that time five value one then I really like these two buttons to basically take up the entire space very efficient and then auto tangent and auto tangent and it's a very smooth door opening that way compile and save this go back to event graph and all we're gonna do is we're gonna get our left door we're going to set the relative rotation because when the door is open they are going to rotate split the struct pin we only need to rotate one axis and that's our z-axis but the door open amount what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply it by negative 90 and the reason for that is 90 degrees we need the door opening 90 degrees and that's the left door and then we got to do our right door and all I did was play with this just to see which direction each needed to rotate but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the timeline here because you guys should know how to do that if you followed any part of my series so this is gonna be positive 90 that's looking good, compile and save. All right, so now we get to the gist of why I wanted to do this episode, which is casting versus interfaces. So the first thing we need is we need to fire an event when the player interacts with that collision box, whether they overlap into it or they leave the overlap. So if you select your box and we can say on component begin overlap, and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cast to that actor. And remember, this only works well if it's a single character class that's going to interact with that actor. And in this case, our third person character. So this is the communication from whatever actor is being overlapped by this box to our actor here. Because if the cast fails here, that means whatever went into the overlap, it wasn't a third person character. It was some other class, but that's okay if we don't want anything else opening the door, just the player character. So I'm just gonna get a reference to our timeline here, which is open door, and I'm gonna say play. And there's actually gonna be something we put here. We're gonna stop playing first. And the reason we're gonna stop playing is because if the character was just, let's say, leaving the space, so on component end overlap, if they were just leaving the space, we want the door to close. We're gonna tell it to play backwards. But if they enter back in, we want it to stop playing backwards. And so we're gonna stop it here and then play it forwards again. So we're gonna do the same thing for communication here. I can just copy and paste. I can connect this up, connect this up here. And so for this one, all we're gonna do instead of play, there's a simple function reverse. 
And we don't want to reverse from end because that would suddenly, if the door is like halfway through, then it would go uh, and then it would reset. So we just want it always to be playing forward or backward from wherever the door is currently. Now we're going to take our reference to the open door timeline and we are going to stop. And so anytime the actor either begins overlap or ends overlap, first it's going to stop whatever it's doing and then it's going to either reverse or if it's ending the overlap, otherwise it's going to play. So we hook all these up and we should be good to go. And this is how I would just do one-to-one -one actor to actor interaction. And the last thing I got to do is I got to switch out all of my individual static mesh components with the actual actor that would be useful. So here, put it here, move it on up, rotate it over. All right, play from here. Here we go. Moment of truth. And voila, it opens up. And if I leave it, does it close? Yes, so we've got some good one-to-one -one, and then it reopens and then it closes and it reopens and it closes and it can basically make it spasm back and forth. But that's the nice thing about doing the timeline in reverse. But now we get to the part where I bet three quarters of the people watching this video skip right to this part because you've already done casting. And that is how to do a blueprint interface if you want multiple types of actors to be able to interact with an object. And there are basically three parts to the blueprint interface. So first we gotta actually create the blueprint interface. And for that, I like having a separate folder for all my blueprint interfaces, just keeps them nice and organized. Okay, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go blueprints and then blueprint interface. And I'm gonna call it BPI interactive entity. So anything that is an interactive entity, I guess you could call it interacts with doors or something like that. But anything that's interactive, any type of actor can implement this interface. And we'll go into that. And what's nice about blueprint interfaces is you can pass whatever variables you want into the blueprint interface or through the interface. So you could say, okay, when fire hits this foliage, we want to pass through the intensity of the fire, the location of the fire, etc. We want to pass all the information through the interface to the receiving actor so it can act on whatever information it's receiving. So this is where you'd create functions that would define whatever variables. So let's say fire interaction. So you'd put inputs here and those are the pieces of information that you're passing into the interface and then the outputs are what your receiving actor is receiving. Because all we need to do here is we need to implement the interface on our third person character because then our character is going to implement the interface and if our character implements the interface face then we know it should open okay so let's open up our third person character third person blueprints and you got to do this step on each individual actor that you want to be interactive so in this case it's just going to be our character but you could do this on multiple character classes you could do it on things like i mentioned earlier a boulder so anything that goes into that overlap box overlap sphere whatever anything you want to interact with it implement the interface and the way we implement that interface is we go into the actor say class settings down here implemented interfaces I'm just going to search for my BPI, nice little naming convention, interactive entity. And then you'd have multiple functions and you can right click and you can actually implement that function as an event. And this fire interactivity is just an example, but that's where you put whatever inputs you want here. And then those are the inputs that you can then interact with on the receiving blueprint. So in this case, the character is actually the receiver of the interface. And the way we're going to tell the door whether or not the character can implement the interface is very simple. So back on our door, instead of casting, what we can say is just get the other actor and say, does implement interface. And we just choose our interface, so BPI. And basically this is checking to see, okay, does whatever actor wandered into this overlap sphere or cube box in our case, does that actor implement that interface? From return value here, we are going to branch, connect this up, and only if it's true, only if it can interact, then do that stuff. You could take this exact thing here, delete it out down here, put it down here, move these over slightly, connect this up, connect this up. Don't forget to connect other actor to there. And you could also, if this isn't working, I would just do a print string past this step, but for all intents and purposes, we should be good here because we could just test it out with the opening of the door. So right click play from here outside of the overlap box and then run into the overlap box. And if the door does not open for you, it means you did not implement the interface or there's some other step that's missing. So those are the three steps to implementing an interface and the reasons why you would use interfaces versus casting. So I hope to see you in the next one.